What's up YouTube, welcome back to another lead code SQL problem. This one's marked as medium, so might be a bit more tricky. Let's solve it together. Yeah, this one's called customers who bought all products. It's numbered 1045 or 1045. Part of SQL 50, as I said, more specifically, it's part of the sorting and grouping section. It's the last one in that section, so it might be the hardest here. It's marked as medium. I think, yeah, if you know what to do, then it's not that hard for medium, but you'll have to know what to do. So, yeah. We have two tables here, one called customer, one called product. Customer has two columns, customer ID and product key, and product only has one column called product key. We should write a solution to report the customer IDs from the customer table that bought all the products in the product table. We should return the result table in any order, and we have some example data down below. So for the customer table, it pretty much denotes the purchases customers have made. So in this case, customer ID one bought product five, customer ID two bought product six, and so on. The product table just has every different product that exists. In this case, there's only five and six, so two different products. Now, customer ID one and three are the ones who bought all products, which are five and six, because in this example one, in the customer table, we have entries for five and six for both customer one and three. So they bought all the products, customer two only bought one of those products, so not part of the output. The output should only be one column customer ID. So yeah, we're just interested in who the customers are that bought all the products. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. In terms of how to approach this, our task is to write a solution to report the customer IDs from the customer table that bought all the products in the product table. So I think the approach here would be to determine how many products there are and then see which customer bought that amount of products. So instead of saying all products, we actually want to determine how many products are there and then counting up how many products did each customer buy. And if that number matches, then that means they bought all products. So that's the solution we're going for. So let's start with determining how many products there are. So in order to do that, we will refer to the product table. So let's count the number of distinct product keys from product because product just lists all the different products and that should give us the number of products that there are. Now in this example one, there should be two products. Yeah, which is this right here. And that should be it for that part actually. So if we know what to do and how to dissect the problem, it gets pretty easy. Now we just want to determine which customers bought, well, we want to determine how many products did each customer buy and then does that mod number match? So let's maybe do how many products did each customer buy? And for this one, we need to use the other table customer because this one has the purchases pretty much. So we will do per customer, how many products did they buy? So we're applying the same sort of function, count distinct product ID. But if we apply that to the customers table, then it will calculate the amount of purchases because the customers table has purchases and the product table has the amount of products that there are overall. Yeah. So we're doing that for each customer ID. So we will have to group by customer ID and that will give us the amount of purchases pe uh, people have made. So I'll try to run only this section to show what it gives us, which should be, let's see if that works. Customer. Yeah. 
Let's see if I have to move this to be able to run it. Yeah, so we get the custom ID, the amount of purchases they made, which is two for custom ID one and three, and two is the number of products that are available. So this works. Let's just see how to bring it together, which will be the final step. So for which customers does the amount of purchases or purchased products match the amount of available products so that calculation of how many different products that they buy should match how many different products are there. So in order to do that, I will use these two different parts and say, we want to select these customers, but we want to make sure that their purchases match the number of products that are available. So since we want to check this calculation, filter on this count, we need to use having to be able to filter based on aggregate functions like count. Can't use where here because this is a calculation that still takes place, so we'll have to use having for that. And that value should be the value of this calculation, how many products there are. So I will copy that and paste it in here. I think we'll have to sort of tie that up by using parentheses to make it a subquery. And yeah, I'll run that and explain it some more. So we're just connecting these two parts. We're selecting customer ID only because that is the only output column we're interested in. From customer, grouping by customer ID to calculate the count of different products they purchased. And we're not having that as part of our output. I removed that from the output here. Instead, we're using the, it, that in the having clause because the having clause allows us to filter on the value that comes from this calculation. And yeah, this calculation should come out to the amount of available products that there are, which is this simple query. So that's the shortest way to combine all of this. Let's submit it to see whether it's accepted. Yeah, you could use a few more subqueries to maybe make it easier for you and not use having. So instead of having, you could just do this calculation of how many products did each customer purchase. Then you select from that where then you, could, then you can use where if you have it as a subquery and then that value should still be the value of this calculation. Yeah, I'll sort of add that here. Amount of available products. Amount of different products available. Yeah, so that's it for that question. Maybe it is really a medium just because you'll have to use having here to get the shortest optimal solution, but it's a good opportunity to learn that and SQL 50 should cover everything that you should know for your SQL interviews. So it makes sense for having to appear in here. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments. Apart from that, we're going to go through the other SQL 50 sections like advanced select and joins, subqueries, and advanced string function and all that is still in there. So feel free to follow along. I have a playlist with all of the questions. Check that one out or just navigate to another video. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.